Well, we're at the uh, concluding uh, Sunday of our, uh, our, our journey together, 13 weeks. And um, as, as we uh, are dealing with the, the last story, the story of building the tower, uh, I simply want to reemphasize that uh, a fact that uh, <clears throat> what you've been dealing with is stuff from Blake. Um, the cornerstones of the Judeo-Christian culture and the campfire stories has not developed by somebody else that I borrowed. Uh, to be sure, the, the basis of the theme is widespread in biblical scholarships. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> some people have asked me before we even started, uh, you know, what could I read to sort of help me understand what you're getting at? And, and I mentioned that person, uh, Davy Napier's book, The Song of the Vineyard, that is very helpful to me in understanding the, the, the whole Old Testament and the first part of it in terms of the first 11 chapters. But uh, uh, over the summer, you've just been exposed to, to my thoughts and my interpretations, and I just want to say thank you for your indulgence with my journey. But as we wrap up our journey, um, of the cornerstones, which has sort of become the morals of the campfire stories today. We finish up with our second cornerstone discovered in the story of the tower. Um, we talked last week about the story of the clan is representing the story of, of humankind. Um, we discovered how pride is uh, making the name for ourselves um, is the downfall of humankind in so many ways. But this week we discover what humankind feared most. Scattered throughout the earth was experienced as a consequence of falling to the temptation of human pride. Now you see, the story is the story of making a name for themselves. You see, humankind experiences a language barrier among humans as well as being scattered so that everybody sort of finds their own place. So the questions around the campfire to prompt the telling of the story might have been, why do people speak in different languages? Why don't we all have the same tongue? Or why are people scattered uh, uh, to live in different places? Uh, often the, the name of the tower which was to be built is referred to as a Hebrew pun or a Hebrew joke for they named the tower uh, Babel, which in Hebrew means confusion. This is a story of human confusion. Different languages, different places, we don't understand each other. We're confused. And that's lived out in the story of the Hebrew people. They, they were striving to make a name for themselves by building a nation, having kings, building a temple. This confusion is represented in the experience of Pentecost, the 50-day event following the ascension of Jesus and everyone present speaking in their own tongues. It's a given. Christian history is filled with episodes of confusion, including making a name for ourselves by choosing conflict rather than reconciliation. Ignoring the spiritual dimension that every human being has in common with each other enables us to identify another cornerstone that must be identified and must be named. The campfire stories always include a consequence of human behavior denying or ignoring the spiritual dimension of humankind. This last story, included in the prehistoric library, 
is no exception. You see, the 12th cornerstone is clear. Pride denies. Pride divides. Pride divides humankind. Imago Dei unites humankind. Simply stated, strife and warfare can only be overcome when humankind refuses to make names for themselves, which allows one group or one person to look down upon another, destroy another, or be taken by another, and rather experience the commonality of humankind in the created order, is the spiritual dimension Imago Dei in all. Jesus said, even your enemy? Yes, your friend, but your neighbor is all humankind because as you are created in the image of God, so is every human being. You see, pride divides humankind. Imago Dei unites humankind. And that is the cornerstone in which the hope of the world that we could become one is anchored in Imago Deo. We are created in God's image and that's what unites us all. So we'll discuss it Sunday and I've just got two questions. What movements and forces within the human community today are endeavoring to divide humankind? On the other hand, what movements and forces within the human community today are endeavoring to unite humankind? We've been at this for 13 weeks. We've discovered in those 13 weeks, those standards of the divine that are hidden in the campfire stories. We looked at the first campfire story of creation and discovered creation is, all of creation is good. Humans, all humans are created in the image of God and that humanity is responsible for the care and protection of all creation. And then we turn to the second story of creation. Humanity is finite, not infinite as God. The desire for sexual intimacy is good without shame. And humanity suffers the consequences of their own behavior. No one is to blame but themselves. And the story of human community told with Cain and Abel, the standard is set Humanity is the brother's keeper. But then the story of the flood, the prelude, the devastating cornerstone, humanity left to their own resources can destroy the created order. But in the darkest of times, 
of human existence, God will find the faithful. And at the end of the storm, great is God's faithfulness. And finally, as wandering humankind decides to make a name for themselves and building a tower, we discover the cornerstone that pride is the ultimate denial of a Mago day. The spiritual dimension of human existence. And finally, we find in that story, pride divides humankind. A Mago day unites. My hope is that we will never lose sight of the cornerstones of our life together. Thank you.